Hey there, my name is Julian, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can add login, signups, gated content, payments, and more to your WordPress site that you're building with Gutenberg. And we're going to do all of this using MemberStack. So first things first, what I want to say is MemberStack is entirely free to try out and build with. You do not need to pay anything until you are launched. So anyways, here we are, and what we have is a WordPress project with Gutenberg installed. We have a blank home page, a blank gated page that we're going to use for this tutorial. And uh, that is just about it. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to plugins, click add new plugin, and then you're going to want to search for member stack. Just like that, hit enter. And as we can see, we have member stack right there. So let's go ahead and hit activate on that once it's done installing and go to our member stack tab over here. So the first thing you're going to need to do is add in your member stack app ID. I already did that during testing, but anyways, let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how to get that right now. So once you've created an account and you've created an app with member stack, you are going to be faced with this screen. If you don't see this screen, simply hit get started right up here in the left sidebar and you will be able to copy your member stack app ID. All right, so now let's head on over into the plugin and paste that in and hit save. So now that you've got that, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is to enable the Gutenberg add-on. So go to add-ons, find Gutenberg right here, which uh, the Gutenberg integration is actually by default always going to work with member stack. So uh, you shouldn't even need to install anything beforehand. Just go ahead, hit this check, hit save changes, and it will let you know that you now have the Gutenberg integration added on. So the next thing that I want to show you super quick is if you're a fan of short codes, then right over here in this short codes tab, you can find a whole bunch of different short codes for login forms, sign up forms, modals, protected content, member data, and logout button, all which have some of their own options. So if you're into short codes, feel free to use those. So the next thing we're going to do is head over to pages and I want to make it so that people can sign up and log in over here on our homepage. So let's just go right over here and open Gutenberg and then we are going to add our member stack blocks. So as you can see here, we have member stack sign up form. Simply search member stack. Um, there are going to be more of these added as time goes on. That being said, regardless of whether or not there is a block already enabled, you can still work with member stack. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. So first things first, let's go ahead and create a signup form. So as we can see here, we now have this signup form and it is working right out of the gate. So we have a couple of options here though. First things first, we can set a redirect URL after signup. We can also set that in the member stack dashboard on the plans page and just have it so let's say any member by default will go to the success page. And then if you have different plans, which we're not gonna talk about plans in this video, although I will introduce them a little bit, you can set redirects based on that. However, this right here allows you to essentially override those redirects and add whatever it is that you want for anyone who signs up via this form. You can also add the plan ID. Like I said, I'm not gonna get much into that in this video. You can change the text here. Let's say to say create an account. And you can also enable passwordless signup, which essentially makes it so instead of an email and a password, they enter their email, they click to create an account, and it sends them a code to their email, which they can use to authenticate themselves. We're going to disable that for now, but we are going to enable social signup. And as you can see here, we've got Google and GitHub already in the Gutenberg integration. Member stack has... Facebook, Dribble, Spotify, all sorts of different things. And uh, Google is actually working right out of the gate. So um, you don't even need to create a Google developer account or anything like that. Simply hit show Google sign up and Google sign up will work on your site. So then we have a couple of different styling options that we can choose. We can choose from a couple of different themes. We can set, let's say, the text color of the labels to whatever we want it to. I'm going to go ahead and make the button color black. We can change all of these different things. And we can also add additional CSS classes to it. And along with that, 
as you can do with uh, pretty much anything in Gutenberg, you can just edit it as HTML and change whatever you want, add any classes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit edit visually. So the next thing that I want to do is test this out and see if it is all working. So let's go ahead and save this right now. And then we're going to head over to our page and see what it looks like. Okay, so as we can see over here, we have our page. We have this little test mode thing from member stack, which we can use to see we're logged out. We can use to see any member stack attributes that we have on the page, and we can just use it for overall testing and making sure everything works. So let's go ahead and create an account. Let's just enter some random made up email for testing purposes. Same thing with the password and hit create an account. As we can see, it very quickly popped up there saying you have successfully logged in. So now let's go over to member stack and go to the members panel and refresh. And let's take a look and see if that member was created. As we can see here, that member was indeed created. So we have everything working as it's supposed to. Now I'm going to show you how to build a sign up form. And the process for that is the exact same. All you need to do is type in member stack, get member stack login form put that in right there. You have your settings for social login. Let's enable Google, passwordless login, style settings, and all of that stuff. So with one click, I'm going to hit save. And as we'll be able to see over here, we now as well have a login form. And then the next thing that I want to show you how to do is how to gate content. So like I said, we have that page, which is called gated. So I'm just going to navigate to that right now. And as we can see, there's absolutely nothing on it right now. Um, let's go ahead and log out here using the inspector. There we go. Now we are logged out. As we can see in here, you are logged out and we can still access this gated page. So let's go ahead and change that right now. Let's head over to our member stack dashboard and go to the gated content tab in the left sidebar. Let's hit add and let's just call this gated. And like I said, there are free plans and paid plans in member stack. So you can assign this to only members on certain plans. In this video, we're just going to grant access to all members. So if you're logged out, you can't see it. If you're logged in, you can see it. And then for restricted URLs, we are going to want to add gated. You can set this to starting with, or you can do equal to. So let's say you have a bunch of pages, gated dash brochure, gated dash ebook, gated dash video, gated dash course then you can have starting with gated, it will gate all those pages for you. Um, we only have one, let's leave it at that. And then this you would usually set to your page, let's say to upgrade or your access denied page or your login page or something like that. We have all that UI on our homepage, so let's just go ahead and leave that as is. And then this right down here where it says, use these data attributes to tag gated content on your site. You can use this attribute to essentially mark anything within the page as gated. Um, instead of gating entire pages, you can gate, let's say, a specific button or anything like that to these specific gated content groups. So let's go ahead and hit save on that right now. And then let's go to our um, WordPress dashboard and let's go to the member stack plugin. Go to gated content, hit refresh gated content. And as we can see, we now have this gated content group. So now if I go back over here and refresh, let's see what's going to happen. I refreshed and it completely securely blocked me from seeing that page and instead it redirected me to the home page. So that is absolutely perfect. Now let's go ahead and create an account again, just like that and hit create an account. So now this signed me up. Now I haven't set a redirect yet, but if I did, it could have taken me straight to the gated page. Let's navigate there manually. And as we can see, I have access to it, but it's pretty useless right now. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to show you how you can actually show member data back to them. And this works with all sorts of member data, including custom fields. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it using or uh, with an email. So it would say welcome back and then the user's email. So let's go to pages over here. Let's go to gated and hit edit. And then right here, let's go ahead and just add some, let's say a heading. Let's say welcome back member. So if in this case there was no email set, it would just say member. Let's go ahead and hit edit as HTML. As we can see over here, we have this H2 and the way this works is by using a span. So let's go ahead and create a span and then add data dash ms dash member equals 
email. Close off that span and then add the closing span right there after the word member. So let's go ahead and hit save on that and let's see what happens if we go back here. As we can see, that has updated to be our email. And let's say, for example, we're using custom fields as well. Let's change this to be first dash name. Let's go ahead and let's see, save that. And now I don't have a first name set. So if I go back over here, it's gonna say welcome back member. But if I was to, let's say, as a member, update my profile or me as the admin, let's say I'm going to go in and add a first name on this member. Let's just say his name is Bob Saget and hit save. Oh, whoops, that was the wrong member. Sorry. This one, we want to be Bob Saget. There we go. Okay, let's hit save on that. And let's go back over here. And as we're going to see, this is now going to say Bob instead of of member. So you can use member stack to allow people to log in, sign up, gate content, log in obviously with social. You can show them back their data to them. There's a whole bunch of different stuff that you can do using member stack. So in this video, I can't explain 100% of how member stack works, but this is enough to give you a nice start so that you can start building your members only site using member stack. But I do want to just mention a couple of things that member stack does have. Like I said, member stack has plans. So let's say you have a language course, which has various languages. You could go ahead and go to plans and let's say create a new free plan for, let's just say Spanish. Let's say Arabic, you can create all sorts of free plans. And you can assign gated content within those free plans. Let's say you make a new one and call it Spanish. And that is what you're going to use to tag content that is related to people who are learning Spanish. You can create as many plans as you want to create. And along with that, we have paid plans, which paid plans are the same. Essentially, they are tagging members saying they have access to certain things and they don't. But paid plans are 100% managed through Stripe payments. So only people who are 100% verified to be on that plan are going to be able to access the content. You can bill them monthly, yearly, in whatever interval you want. You can have setup fees. You can have free trials. Really, the sky is the limit. Whatever you're trying to build, you should be able to build it. Um, along with that, members have data on them. So I already went through custom fields, but we also have metadata and JSON. So you can use these things to store various types of data. We're going to make videos about this as well in the future, uh, which may look different across members, which you may want members to be able to update and change on their own. You can, let's say, use it to track their course progress. You can use it to track really whatever it is that you want. So here at MemberStack, we are really excited about WordPress and we are new to the WordPress space. That being said, our philosophy as a company is that we want to build everything for you. So the first link in the description is going to be a link to join the WordPress Slack. And if you have any questions directly for me, for other community members, or for other members of the member stack team, you can ask in there. You can request certain tutorials. We're really excited about helping you build what you want to build with WordPress. So I'm going to see you in the Slack channel. I hope this helped and have a great day.